Cases of COVID-19 are on the rise in some parts of Western Canada. British Columbia posted 185 new infections yesterday. 113 of those new cases are in the interior health region. That's where the province declared a COVID-19 outbreak and reintroduced a mask mandate. Neighboring Alberta is taking a very different approach in dealing with a slow rise in cases there, removing some of its mitigation and tracking measures, even, as I mentioned, those case counts are going up. Adrian Dix is British Columbia's health minister. He's in Vancouver. Minister, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Your government is reintroducing some COVID measures in some parts of the province. Uh, what can you tell us about the latest case surge and what's behind it right now? Well, what we see is um, in a, a region of the province, the C Central Okanagan Local Health Area, there are about 90 local health areas in the province, and they've had about half of our cases. The other 89 have had the other half over the last week. So we decided to take some steps. The medical health officer, the chief medical health officer in the Interior Health Authority decided to take some steps in that local health area to uh, reduce transmission at this time as we had, as we move to and continue to move to raise vaccination rates. And this is really gonna be our approach from now on. We're at step three of our reopening. Step four would come in September if the numbers are, uh, are appropriate. We're going step by step, but this is the approach we'll take. Uh, continued aggressive contact tracing, uh, self-isolation, working with people, testing, and of course, um, and importantly, measures where they're required. And they'll be more likely to be local measures, either local to a business or local to a community. People in Canada, people around the world are exhausted by the pandemic. Are you confident that the measures you're reintroducing, particularly around masking, are people going to listen and follow the rules or are people just burnt out with the pandemic? I think they are, uh, and I think they have consistently. I give people in BC a lot of credit for that because it's been, as you say, a long grind. Uh, we've been working on this uh, since the, really the beginning of January 2020, if you can imagine that. The pandemic was declared in March 2020. I think they're going to. I think people see uh, the risks, the risks for their loved ones, and uh, uh, the risks uh, of this vicious, nasty virus. And so where it's necessary, uh, where we need to reapply some measures, as is the case right now in central Okanagan. We're over, by the way, most of the pandemic cases have been below the provincial average. So this has come upon under these circumstances. But if you look three months ago, they would be doing better, right? To introduce them for those times to cut that level of transmission. And that's, I think, an approach that people respect. Your neighbor, Alberta, is taking some dramatic changes when it comes to how to deal with COVID. Um, some things, actually, some, some changes to some policies that you just talked about being important. Uh, contract tra uh, tra tracing, isolation, uh, and testing. What do you make of the changes that are going to be happening in your neighbor province? Well, I can't speak for Alberta, but speaking for British Columbia, we have really three ways to address this that we're doing. Uh, there's traditional public health measures, those things you talked about, contact tracing and other things that become more necessary as we move through this stage of the pandemic, in my view, for British Columbia. Secondly, vaccination, and we have to continue to raise vaccination levels. We're at 81% of all those over 12, all those eligible in BC, so we have to do that. And we have to consider prudently um, uh, measures and, and, uh, and counsel for people to help them protect themselves. And those are, the, those are our three tools. And um, if we're gonna move to open up as we have and to ease restrictions as we have, then we have to continue to drive on vaccination. That's what we're doing. That's what our Vax for BC campaign is about. And secondly, uh, not settle at 81% never settle, but continue to raise levels and to continue to do what are the public health measures to reduce uh, the spread of COVID-19 and help people when they get sick. Uh, I recognize that you don't speak for the province of Alberta and you're not making decisions there. But, you know, as as a health minister, do you think that Alberta is making a wise choice in going through this this course of action to pull back on some of those restrictions and regulations? Well, I think most jurisdictions have done pretty well. And we've been mostly in parallel in our approaches to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, to this point. So I think uh, I'm not uh, uh, I'm not specifically critical in Alberta, and I'm not there. All I can tell you in BC, we're going to continue contact tracing. When people get sick, they need to self-isolate here. If businesses see transmission within their businesses, they're likely to be closed down for a period. These are all necessary. This is, I would say, 
the necessary elements to ease restrictions, which is what we've been doing. And so we'll be continuing to look at three sets of things. Obviously, hospitalizations and mortality are important and cases, and all three are important. And, you know, there is a great deal, unfortunately, that we still don't know. We're approaching another winter of uh, COVID-19. And while we uh, can make, and we have some of the best people in the world, Dr. Bonnie Henry is one of the leading experts in the world on these questions. We can get their advice, but there's a lot we don't know. And that's why um, we need to both ease restrictions and open up at the same time. We've got to continue to have uh, public health there at the ready, effective to both help people when they get sick. And this is important, right? Especially in these times. And as well, uh, ensure that we don't see widespread transmission. Uh, in some provinces, uh, we have seen borders close because of concerns about surging cases. If these changes happen in Alberta and there, there is a surge in cases, which nobody wants to see, but if, if there is something like that, would you consider closing the border with Alberta to, to keep people in BC safe? Uh, I'm concerned about cases in British Columbia. I'd say. So I, I don't think in Canada, where um, interprovincial travel is really federal jurisdiction in any event, where there's a lot of- In Ontario, Doug Ford of, a, closed the border. A lot of travel, a lot of travel between, uh, between uh, provinces. And in a general sense, uh, I think we'd agree in, a, in our federal system that uh, interprovincial transportation is a federal responsibility. I know the federal government would agree with that, you know, most of the time, except maybe when it's not convenient to them. I don't know. Uh, I, I think uh, we haven't closed borders between provinces up to now. I don't expect us to. But uh, believe me, the COVID-19 pandemic continues to be a serious concern. And as we open up and ease restrictions, and there is joy and celebration about that, we have to, all of us, do everything we can to drive vaccination levels up in all of our provinces together. So I'm hoping for, I'm supporting Alberta. I'm, I, I, I want them to succeed because it has implications for BC, but I want them to succeed because I'm a Canadian. I want everyone to succeed. Your province is about to experience another stretch of hot, dry weather. Uh, during the heat dome, uh, there were an unprecedented number of deaths. What is your province doing to make sure that doesn't happen this time? Well, what we saw in the heat dome was something that we had never seen before in parts of British Columbia, especially here in Metro Vancouver, uh, levels of sustained heat and sustained heat indoors that we'd never seen. The only thing approaching it occurred about 12 years ago, and that was nothing like it. So it was a very significant thing as individuals to be used to and as a community to be used to. So we are taking all of the steps in the health authorities, all the steps in long-term care and assisted living we need to, the support that we're providing to our uh, ambulance paramedics who are gonna be working their guts out this weekend. Because all of us know high heat uh, leads to higher levels of mortality in general. And we have, to, uh, we have to take steps now. So we have a lot of information out there for people as how they can stay safe as individuals. One of the challenges, I think, Katie, in, uh, for the healthcare system is that those who we can directly uh, have our hands on in a way are, are connected to people who are in long-term care or getting long-term home support or in hospital, uh, those people that uh, have people caring for them. And while these are, they are the most vulnerable people, they're also getting supports. The people that we need to reach and speak to during these periods of high heat are people who are living alone, who haven't ex maybe not experienced this heat before, We've experienced the kind of heat we're going to get this weekend before, but uh, that wasn't the case at the end of June and provide supports for them. And that means things such as cooling stations and communities. But, but it means all of us, everybody watching us needs to contact anyone they know who's vulnerable this weekend to see how they're doing as well, because we've got to support each other in what's uh, a really difficult time here in BC. And I just want to note, I talked about, we talked about the Interior Health Authority earlier, that there are parts of the Interior Health Authority that are, uh, will be dealing with very high heat, even for them, are dealing with wildfires, and are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. And we've got to do everything we can do to support them. This, uh, in that sense, these are unprecedented times. So for, for that part of the province, what can you do? What, what, are the, what are the tangible things you can do to make sure that people get through this stretch of hot weather, uh, whether they're dealing with COVID, dealing with wildfires and smoke and dealing with these high temperatures? What are the tangibles that you can do to make, make sure people are as safe as they can be? 
Well, on COVID, we're getting, we need to get people vaccinated and, and protected and supported. You saw the actions that uh, Dr. Sue Pollock, our, our regional health officer took, our medical health officer and in interior health took already. So we're laying that out in a very um, intense campaign of vaccination that's going on in BC. And it's one of the most successful uh, ca vaccination campaigns in the world. On wildfires, uh, my colleague, Mike Farmworth of Wildfire, uh, the, uh, our emergency services across BC, there's an extraordinary effort going on to deal with wild, wildfires, which are a huge challenge in our province to deal with the effects of smoke, providing people with advice about that as well, and assist people. And the, these problems can be linked, right? Because we have uh, people moving from one community to another with respect to wildfires, which has some effect on COVID-19. And thirdly, with respect to heat, making sure A, people have the information they need and, and do what we've done in all uh, heat waves when we get notice of a heat wave, which is to put all of our health authorities on emergency response so that we can help people when they're in distress. But we need people to understand that uh, this heat can affect them, can hurt them, especially if they have underlying health conditions. This affects all of us. It affects me personally. I have type one diabetes. We all have to be conscious in this time and not believe just because we've seen hot weather before that we can get through this. The, this uh, we can, we expect uh, from the weather to have significantly lower lows during the nighttime than we saw at the end of June and through uh, Canada Day uh, during the heat dome period in BC, and that's good. But nonetheless, this is hot weather and we have to prepare for it. Minister, I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Anytime, Katie. Get back to Washington sometime. Eh? <laughs> we'll see about that. Thank you. Okay, right on. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.